Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise today. How many of you have the victory today? Hallelujah. I got the victory in the blood. In the blood, I have overcome the evil one. Satan is under my feet, he's under my feet, where he belongs. And I won't back down, no, I'm standing strong. Greater is he, greater is he to send me than he that is in the world. I am super victorious. In the blood, well, greater is he, greater is he to send me than he that is in the world. I am super victorious in the blood. Come on, put him under your feet today. Put him under your feet. 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 Come on, you ought to put him under your feet. 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 Come on. Greater, greater is he to send me than he that is in the world. I am super victorious in the blood. Well, greater is he. Greater is he to send me than he that is in the world. I am super victorious. In the blood, come on. Greater is he, greater is he to send me than he that is in the world. I am super victorious in the blood. Well, greater is he, greater is he to send me than he that is in the world. I am super victorious in the blood. Come on, someone give me praise today. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. I love you. 
today. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. We worship you today, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
bow before the King of Kings. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. worship you. You are here. 
praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We worship you today, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. still try to take control cause I get scared when I can't see the end and all you want from me is to let go your parting waters making a way for me your On all your promises Well, cause I have seen and know Your faithfulness Your parting waters Making a way for me Your moving mountains That I don't even see You've answered my prayer and keep pressing on. The devil is a liar and there is victory in that mountain. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
peaks and rocky slopes when I felt lost God laid his hand on me well I'm so thankful for this journey even though it seems so hard from time to time God will give me grace and mercy and with one step at a time I'm gonna cry oh, oh, there's victory in the mountains and God will give me strength to fight and I know that I can make it I will reach the other side each trial and each heartache has left me here to find God will give me strength and with one step at a time I'm gonna climb Come on, lift your voice today oh, There's victory in the mountain and God will give me strength to climb and I know that I can make it I will reach the other side Each trial and each heartache has left me here to find God will give me strength and with one step at a time Hallelujah. Can y'all shout glory in this place today? Oh, come on. Y'all can do better than that. Come on. Somebody shout glory. Yes. Come on. Somebody praise him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before, before I preach this message, the Lord laid upon my heart. Uh, I'm going to come out here so y'all can see it. This case that I hold in my hand, kind of a somewhat personal story behind this, but I'll go ahead and tell it to you guys as it is. I had a great uncle back in 79. It's my Nana's brother, actually. She was pregnant with my daddy when this happened. His name was Thomas Garrett. He was an on fire, passionate man of God. Fresh out of high school, he died at 18 years old by a drunk driver. This was his. My Nana gave it to me for my birthday this past year. And when my dad was born, he was named Robert Thomas, named after him. And my dad named me after my uncle as well, Isaac Thomas. So that's why I carry this thing around. Thank you. But I want to share with you guys a message, message that, excuse me, I want to share a message the Lord laid upon my heart here a couple weeks ago. You see, I was doing a uh, Celebrate Recovery, and uh, the Lord started giving me different, different things that I could say. But the title of my message today is Finding Healing through obedience. Let me say that again. Finding healing through obedience. You see, one of the most important lessons in life that we learn is obedience. If you're told to do something, do it. And you don't question it, you do it. Like when mom and dad tell you to go clean your messy room, you don't question it, you just do it. 
Don't use the excuse, come on, I'm busy. I have my phone or I have my video games on. No, you can put that away for at least five minutes to clean your room. Be obedient for once. And this especially goes for our walk with Christ. Excuse me. If you guys have your Bibles or your cell phones, whatever you have, please turn to the book of John chapter 9. That's John chapter 9. And in, in chapter 9 of the book of St. John, we find a familiar passage of Scripture where Jesus healed a man who had been blind from the time he was born. If you all haven't, shout amen this evening. Amen. Now, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why is this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned by us, by the one who, is, who sent us. The night is coming. No one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. That's Jesus talking. Jesus is the light of the world. Then he quickly spit into the ground and made mud with his own saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes and told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means scent. So the man went and washed his face. And after he did that, he could see. Now, this passage of scripture goes along with the title Finding Healing Through Obedience. So the blind man knew he had to be obedient. He didn't question it. He was like, okay, like, no problem. You see, I love that song by Sona and Rebecca Isaacs called Waiting in the Water. If you guys don't know what that song is, I encourage you to listen to it. It goes like this, every step that I take is a step of faith. When I can't see what's in front of me, when I can't see what's in front of me, I'll just keep going and just believe. When Jesus told the blind man, go wash your face in the water, he knew it's what he had to do. This blind man found healing through his obedience. When he washed his face in the water. You see, So many times in life, we need to realize that our healing will come through our acts of obedience. God is our Father, our Heavenly Father. And when He tells you to do something, you do it. And you do it until He tells you to stop. You don't do it until you want to stop. You do it until He tells you to stop. That's the way it works. I'm going to give you another passage of Scripture. If you guys want to turn to the book of Daniel chapter 3. That's Daniel chapter 3, starting in verse 8. This is another passage of scripture where we find that there was, obe that there was healing and deliverance through obedience. Starting in verse number 8. If you have it, shout amen. Starting in verse 8, it says, some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. And they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king! You issued a decree requiring that all the people bow down and worship the gold statue when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and the sounds of all other kinds of musical instruments. That decree also states those who refuse to obey must be thrown into the blazing furnace. You see where I'm going with this? Just wait now. Here we find some Jews. Three of them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
whom you have put in charge of the, pro of the province of Babylon. Pay no, <laughs> they pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods, and they refuse to worship your gold statue. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew in, and he was enraged. Oh, he was mad, all right. And he ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. And when they were brought in before him, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods and worship the gold statue I set up? Is that true? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the gold statue that I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you shall be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. <laughs> and then what God's going to be able to rescue you from my power? That's Nebuchadnezzar talking. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to, we don't need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it very clear to you, your majesty. We will never bow down and serve your gods and worship the statue that you have made. And then Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Who could survive that? Seven times hotter? Then he ordered that some of the strongest men of the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them in the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot furnace, the flames killed the soldiers that, flew, uh, that threw them in there. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego securely tied, fell, into the flames. But wait though, but wait. Y'all didn't see the plot twist. Let's keep on reading. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and tell them to go into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men. I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed. And the fourth looks like a god. Isn't that awesome? Three men tied up and binded up and thrown into a blazing fiery furnace. But because of their acts of obedience and their faith, God delivered them. Nebuchadnezzar didn't see it coming, but boy, the three Hebrew children did. You see, sometimes our you see, sometimes through our obedience comes miracles, comes deliverance, and prayers are answered through our faith and obedience. If y'all don't mind, I want to share a little testimony with you guys. You guys know that I do a lot, a lot of work over at Alcoa Maryville Church of God, or AMCOG, as, they, as, as, as we all know it. All those that live in this area and those that are familiar with it, it's called AMCOG. It's an acronym. But I have a testimony I want to share with you guys. Last year, I was playing drums over there, and there was a baptizing service later on that same day. It was a Wednesday night. Some of you might remember this. But suddenly, I had a big time feeling in my chest. Oh, I was getting tight. I had never felt this before. I was feeling it in my shoulders. I was feeling it. And I was like, God, what is this? What is this? Like, God, is it really you or is it just me? You see, sometimes we just don't know. 
A lot of times we just don't know if it's the Holy Spirit or if it's just us. That's why it's very important that we learn to listen to the voice of God. That's where faith comes in. So I kept on praying and saying, God, is this really you? If it is, please give me a sign. That's when my brother Wes over here jumped in that, uh, let me say it like that, jumped in the uh, baptismal. That's when I knew I had to be obedient. If he was obedient on his part and Brother Jeremiah was obedient on his part, I knew I had to be obedient on my part. So I did. <laughs> now we all know that we've been praying for our pastor for quite a few years now. And I knew it, that through my act of obedience that he would find his healing. Sometimes a son, his own flesh and blood, was obedient on his part. And he had faith. And that's me. I'm talking about myself here. I knew that through my faith and through my act of obedience that there would be healing brought in my household. And so many times in life we keep asking questions. Like I said earlier, when mom and dad tell you to do something, you do it. Why can't I have a cookie? Why can't I play my video games? Why can't I have a cupcake? Well, mommy and daddy don't need to tell you why. You just need to, tr you, you, you just need to obey them. If they say no, no means no. They don't have to tell you why. Well, some of y'all got quiet in here today. And oftentimes we keep on asking God, why? Why me, God? Why? Why am I going through this? God doesn't have to tell you why. All God wants you to do is have faith in him. Trust and obey. If he tells you to go somewhere you've never been before, you don't question it. You just be like, okay, God, I'm trusting you in this. I don't know where I'm going, but I trust that you'll guide me the way. You can keep on asking God why, but then suddenly that still small voice can tell you, why not you? Why not you? The pain is not a punishment. It's a test to see if you can handle it and learn to lean on me and to trust me. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 3 to trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. And in that same passage it says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Acknowledge him in everything you do, and he will direct your path. But oftentimes, we want to take control of our own steps, and we want to take control of our own lives, just like the song we were singing earlier today. I believe, God, that you are God. And I admit, sometimes I, even I still try and take control because I can't see my way. I get too scared when I can't see my way. All you want me to do is be still. Brother Jim Hitson from Mountain View always said, God is still God. God is still God and he always will be God. You see, it's, it's always important for us to have faith. Learn to seek God. Put God first. The book of Matthew says, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You see, there's a pattern you gotta follow. You can have faith all you want that God's gonna that God's gonna perform a miracle on you, but you gotta be you gotta do your part and, and be obedient. But there's an order you gotta follow. You gotta follow the directions, just like the Book of Chronicles says. If all my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their ways, see the see the twist there. Turn from their ways. Don't don't keep on doing what you're doing. Turn from it. Come to me, God says, and then I'll deliver you. Then I'll heal your land, and then I'll forgive your sins. Come to me first and turn from your wicked ways, will you? We all have a testimony, don't we? Come on, everybody, come on, raise your hands if you all have a testimony. Not one person in this room has a testimony without a test. Like I said just a minute ago, God can say that the pain is not a punishment. 
It's a test to see if you can handle it. And it's because of that, your testimony can touch many, many people. Because of that, a seed can be planted of salvation. Always learn to lean on God. Learn his voice. Resist the devil and he shall flee. That's what the word says. Amen? Learn to lean on God and not on yourself for once. You will notice a huge difference. If you would just stop doing what you want to do instead of what you're told to do. When God tells you to do something, you do it. Stop doing what you're doing for once and learn to obey God. Why didn't you obey him? Well, I forgot because I was busy. Okay, what were you busy doing? Was it important? No, 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 no need to point fingers now. Haven't we all been there? What's important is that we learn to trust and obey God and keep his commandments. One of the, and one of the Ten Commandments says, Honor your father and mother, and your days on earth shall be long. That's word. That's scripture. But another one that we need to follow, and, th and, th and this is another act of obedience. When the Bible says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And the next one is just as much important as the, as the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love! You see the key word there? The key word is love, not like. The Bible doesn't say you have to like. It says you need to love. But it also says you need, <laughs> you need to do your part and obey, and you need to forgive those who have done you wrong. Always trust and obey. You know, at some point or another, the Bible is going to come to an act of obedience. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Seek, and you will find it. Knock, and the door shall be open. That's obedience. Now, I know that <laughs> through everything, there's a loophole, but not the word. The word never has a loophole. When it says trust and obey, it means trust and obey. A contract has a loophole, but not the word. It's always important for us to learn to trust and obey. I'm not going to say that enough. Trust and obey. Trust and obey, boys. And girls, for that matter. Trust and obey. I'm not pointing fingers. Okay. Trust and obey. You want a word? You wanted a word? You got a word today. Trust and obey. Come on, somebody give God some praise today. Pastor.